textbooks are wonderful tools for teaching physics. Every physics classroom should have several, and every physics student should be taught how to use them. In this video, I'll be showing you the top 10 demonstrations that you can do while using a tuning fork. When using a tuning fork, hold it by the base and strike the end of the tines with a rubber mallet. If a mallet is unavailable, strike it against something moderately soft like a bent knee or a mouse pad or the edge of a table. Once it's vibrating, touch the lower part of the tines near the joint to dampen out the unwanted higher harmonics. Hold the tines near your ear or the base of a large flat surface such as a tabletop or a whiteboard. Try dipping the tuning fork in water. All sounds come from vibrations. This experiment looks great in slow motion. Try putting the tuning fork in front of a CRT computer monitor for an interesting wiggly effect. What the? An adjustable strobe light can give the illusion of slow motion. Is this tuning fork even moving? Whoa, I guess it was. Clip a simple speaker removed from its housing to an oscilloscope and demonstrate the pure tone of the tuning fork. You can also verify its frequency. One of the most famous demonstrations is that of resonance. I have these two tuning forks which are on the same frequency, 256. If I sound one of them, the sound gets transported to the other through resonance and back again. Here's a way you can enhance the demonstration. I've hung a ping pong ball on a string and it's up against the edge of one of the tuning forks. Watch what happens. For this demonstration, I'm setting a beam of laser light all the way across the room. And it lands on this solar cell which is connected to a speaker system. When I block the beam with my hand, you can hear it on the speakers. Now partially blocking the beam with a tuning fork. You can hear it on the speakers. These two tuning forks are not in agreement. This one has a little extra ballast which lowers the frequency slightly. When I sound them together, the sounds will interfere rhythmically, both constructively and destructively. That's called beats. You can see it on an oscilloscope. One very common lab that uses tuning forks is measuring the speed of sound by resonance. Here, I've got a 288 hertz D tuning fork. I strike the tuning fork and hold it, searching for the resonance. Then, by measuring the height at resonance, you can determine the wavelength of the sound. There are many interesting demonstrations and experiments to perform by gluing a mirror on the end of a tuning fork. If you shine a laser light on the mirror and then wiggle it around when it's struck, you'll notice that you get the sine curve. That's right, the tuning fork is vibrating in a sinusoidal pattern. Combining two tuning forks and pointing them at perpendicular angles, you can generate the original Lizardju figures. Don't forget that these are actually musical notes. Take tuning forks C, E, and G, and you can strike a chord. The chord is C major. One of the last things you're going to want to do with your tuning fork is tune a musical instrument. You got to be careful because the scientific tuning forks do not match the musical scale. The way it's usually done is you take a tuning fork and resonate it on the body of the instrument and see if it matches the note that you're playing. 
Well, I hope you learned everything you wanted to know about tuning forks. See the article for more details, and I'll see you next time.